Can't see the one back in here. It's starting to get really good. You want one out? Ooh. No. Huh? This is going to be a lot more clear. You could put that on. Let's put it on like this. Half of it. It's probably like a couple of inches. You have to be careful that the moon doesn't be out too far. Oh, we've been down already. I kind of want to put like a camera up here. You've already been in the 20s in there. Before, me and, before I went on the internet to find out it's supposed to be between 60 and 80. Yeah, now down it's down to 20. 20. It's down to 86. Oh. Well, just saw that right there. You might as well stop it and restart it now. Yeah. Oh, there is one out. Do you see him walking? You know, oh my gosh, how big he looks. Actually, in real life, he looks bigger now. Let me just turn the video. Oh, you see a moon Yeah, right here. Yeah. Really oh, 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 Pat! Yeah, he's going, toward, he's going back in that corner again. He knows where to be out of the camera. Landon just took him out of that spot. He likes it back there on that, where that food is. Yeah. He probably like this all and he did he it. I also like that thing that he took out of there. I like to go under it. I think I don't like. Well, he, I like likes things. It, he likes it right there. I don't know. Yeah, he don't yeah. like that light on all the time either. I mean, it, they don't. They don't mind it at night, but when day is like, come on, there's enough light. Turn it off. Mo is the one that didn't like the light. Yeah, he ended up dying. Not because of the light. It looks like Mo was eaten in half. Eaten half? Yeah, he was like split in half when I found him. I thought you had a hermit crab. Oh, I was basically having a heart attack. I thought you had a hermit crab. That's perfect. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Right there you can actually see the crab in the background. You can see everywhere now. That cord's kind of interfering. That lid's going to fall off now. Never even going to see that. That's perfect. Perfect, baby. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. You see? There you go. She went down to 83 there. already. See, Kermit, Timmer's in, his, Timmer's in the house. Longshell and Bombshell are in there, Take too. Take that food there and move it over back that way so I can see. 83. That humidity's going to go down quite a way, so... Yeah, that's not that good. Yeah. Take it through and move it down so I can see the screen, will you? Yeah. Huh? Oh. Yeah, there. Just move it. No, no, no. Just move it down that way. No, I actually... No, what way? Nothing. I'm talking about the food, so you put it all up here. That's actually a better, better spot for yeah. it. Yeah. I can see her. Cool. It's obviously going to be a lot clearer when we're done, when we look at it, but... Let's just not go over the front of the screen now. It's just sand. That's, that's just on the phone. I know, it's on the outside. It's not on the outside. It's on, it is on the inside, but it's not on the phone. Let's go on the path. Let's go on the path. Leave this house. We are not one to wait down the other side. Go to them.
Yeah, this was Sybil channeling the spirit of a colonial soldier. Where were Hans and Sybil when they recorded this? This is Hans's 1967 investigation of the Barnstable House, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. He was contacted in 1966 by the owner, Leonard Spencer. He was operating a restaurant in the building at the time. According to the letters, the family was seeing objects move on their own, light anomalies, and they saw the apparition of a little girl up in their attic. My father was about to go to Massachusetts. And then Mr. Spenson unexpectedly sold his business and moved out. He, he just left? Yep. Well, did Hans contact the new owner? He didn't have to. The new owner reached out to Hans for help within months of acquiring the property. Same activity? Moving objects, light anomalies, the exact same things as the previous owner. From the recording we just heard, it sounded like Hans was helping the spirit to cross over. Do we know if that worked? He believes so. He never heard of any other paranormal disturbances after his investigation. If it did stop, it started back up again. The building is currently professional offices. The owner, an attorney named Carrie Strumsky, claims that she personally hasn't had any experience with paranormal activity, but her tenants, her clients, and just about anybody that sets foot in this building has some kind of run in with the presence. Just not carry not that she's willing to talk about interesting well what do we know about the history of the barnstable house it's one of the oldest buildings in barnstable it was built in 1716 by james and thomas Payne, and through the centuries some of the oldest families in the country have lived there it's been everything from a tavern to an inn to the professional offices that it is today with a history that long and so varied it's gonna be really hard to pinpoint where a haunting like this starts my father always said that the spirits want to tell their stories. We just need to listen. Well, then that's where we'll start. We'll do a preliminary investigation, and I'd like to meet with Carrie Strumsky, the owner. There might be more to her story than she's telling us. We'll let her know we're in a way. Right. spoke with two separate owners of the Barnstable House, experiencing almost identical paranormal activity. According to the file, they saw full body apparitions, shadow figures, and the fireplace spontaneously combusting. And now, 50 years after Hans helped the restless spirit of a soldier move on, people are experiencing the same exact things. Everyone except for the owner, Carrie. Uh, she was eager to accept our help, so she's opened the place up to us so we can start with a baseline investigation. Our psychic unit, Cindy, hasn't seen the files, so along with our equipment tech, Shane, she'll do a walkthrough of the building, uninfluenced by any of the stories of the owner's past or present. If there's something still here, half a century after Hans was visiting with Sybil, Cindy's going to find it tonight. Baseline investigation. Well, she dyed her hair. No. Well, she's young now. How old? She's young. Well, I don't think she's old enough to be dying her hair yet. Well, it's like it's a fresh I latch. Think, I don't know if she's dying her hair or not. She looks young. Um. All right. I really just feel like I just want to go back there. Okay. See now it's jet black. Mm. 
somebody was hanged here. I'm like, what? And he feels so pissed off about this. He has some unfinished business because he was wrongly accused of something or paid way too much of a price. He's pissed. Okay. I want to go upstairs. Okay. I keep hearing a little girl saying my name. She's going, Cindy, you can't catch me. I'm over here. I'm over here. It's really weird. I think she went over here. Wait a minute. She's gone. Whatever this is, it moves really, really quickly. It looks like a ball of light, but it shoots all over the place. It's moving really fast. You can't figure out what it is, where it is, but I hear a little girl's voice, so. This is unbelievable. When Hans was here with Civil League and the owners of this establishment back in 1967, they went into a room and they were blinded by a large flash of light. They all saw this and then it was gone. Cindy's picking up on this exact same phenomena. Okay. There's a woman that I'm seeing too with really long black hair. Um, Can you see what she's wearing? I, I see her wearing, um, it's like a white dress with this white collar. So I want to go up on the third floor upstairs. What the hell is that here? What is this? What is this? This room is scary. What is this? I don't know. It's a weird room. heard something about drowning. There was a drowning. That's what I just heard. I, I feel like there's a lot of tragedy that happened in this house between the drowning that I'm hearing and I keep seeing a, a death that happened around a fire or smoke inhalation. It had to do with fire. Cindy's picking up on a house fire. I can't remember any mention of that, but perhaps it's something else that I can locate with the historian. This place is giving me a headache. Massive headache. Hold on. I just heard like a growl. I just heard a growl as we were walking by. I don't know. Did you just hear that? I definitely heard a growl. We just heard it down here. I just heard like a growl. Did you just hear that? I definitely heard a growl. We just heard it down here. Just doing a quick sweep. I did a search on here is uh and uh I hang on here is a hope or the why one thing. Okay, I'm not picking no up thyroid. anything on the thermal. There's definitely something up here. That was crazy. If last night's baseline was any indication. Activity in the Barnstable house hasn't slowed down one bit. And some of the things that Cindy sensed, like the dead child and the ball of light, they seem to jump right off the pages of Han's file from over 50 years ago. Who is a big hidden Now, before we get too much further, I'm gonna sit down with Carrie Stromsky, the owner of the house, and get her take on the situation. Terry, thank you very much for giving us access to the Barnstable House. 
you know, we're, we're coming in off of Hans Holzer's original investigation from August of 1967. Would you mind telling me a little bit about the history of this place? How did you come to own it? I've always been drawn to this building. I'm actually blood related to the original owner of the house, James Payne. Oh, really? Yeah, and I did not learn that until long after I purchased this building. And you've always felt this connection to the house? I have. When Hans and Sybil Leak did their investigation, they came upon some very unusual activity. Um, it doesn't surprise me. We've got 300 years of people telling stories about what they've witnessed, what they've experienced. A lot of the stories associated with the Barnstable House involve stories both in the attic and in the basement. Why do you think those two points specifically in this house are such hotbeds of activity? This house was built over a running water source. It was common in colonial days to do that. There's a legend about a little girl named Lucy drowning in the well in the basement. Really? I just heard something about drowning. <laughs> legend about the attic is that uh, there was a woman who lived in the house who was married to a sea captain. Her husband was out to sea and he never returned. And the legend is that she died waiting for him on the third floor. It's believed that she was Lucy's mother. But even though it's legend and lore, people are having encounters with a woman and a child spirit. Yes. One of the most infamous stories um, relates to a fire that was in this building in the 1980s. A fire broke out and there were firemen who reported witnessing a woman in a white dress or a white gown on the third floor attic in the window. One of the firemen went up to rescue her thinking she was trapped in a burning building and that when he got to the third floor, there was no one there. Have you personally had an experience here? Yeah, I wish I could say I did. But as far as the reported apparitions and activity, I would, I would have to say no. This is odd. Uh, the Barnstable House has over a half century of well-documented hauntings. Past owners have flat out fled the place, but Carrie hasn't felt a thing. Her tenants and their visitors, on the other hand, they have plenty to talk about and they're encountering something much more unwelcoming. So I was in this room. My mom has an office here, so I come here to study. We were alone in the house at this point, and I just got this feeling like I was being watched, I wasn't alone. It was like a veil just like came down. I stepped out into this hallway right here to make sure there was no one around, and I see what is a perfect human shadow. Couldn't even believe it, I was looking at it. I did get the feeling that it was like a more masculine energy to it. This felt like it knew who I was, and it was almost like watching me, like keeping tabs. What do you believe it was trying to tell you? Watch your back. Valley owns this house. This is its house. Get out. If Hans did help a spirit move on, there's no question that something else is still here, and it doesn't want company. But why would this all be happening here? Hans believed that a water source, such as the well under the house, could be sort of a paranormal battery. But that doesn't explain how aggressive this presence is. And only with certain people. There has to be something else. I'm meeting up with a local historian who could hopefully shed some light on the history of this location. This area was all Wampanoag territory and uh, the colonials forced them out. How did they force them out? Often violently. The king granted the lands, even though they belonged to the Indians. So they would give them a paper saying, you don't own this land. And they would come in with their soldiers and force them out. And if they didn't leave, they get burnt out. Among the fire. To shoot them. Well, we were killed. Any strange stories surrounding the Payne family that you're aware of? 
there's a spirit called uh, Lucy. People that's worked there, they used to say that a little girl has uh, running about in the house. So people have told you that they've seen the spirit of little Lucy? I've seen her myself. You have? I have in 1985. We went to the Barnesville house and a few other people. We were up in the attic and suddenly it got real cold. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a flash. You saw a flash of light? Yes. It looked like a ball of light, but it shoots all over the place. It was this white light like hitting my, oh my, my eye. And I looked over there very distinctly. Remember the door opening up? And there she was. She was looking straight at me. I was afraid to say anything. I couldn't believe what I had seen. I just drained at first, you know, because I was so shocked. Are there any known hangings on the property at all? Yes. In 1777, shipping was a very lucrative business. Edmund Howes, he took it upon himself to cash in the house, the Barnesville house, because he was the owner, mortgaged everything for continental currency thinking he could make a lot of money on a transaction down at the uh, harbor with the war coming out. But just a short time after that, a law was passed in the United States that continental currency was worthless. And he went down to the docks with that money to make the exchange and was told that it was no good. He's pissed because he doesn't feel like he should have paid the price. Somebody was paying to him. He was distraught, came back up the hill, and just hung himself. He was distraught, came back up the hill, and just hung himself. A Native American massacre, a distraught former owner, and a young girl who drowned in the basement. This property has seen more than enough tragedy to leave a psychic imprint. Combined with the stream that the house is built on, you get a perfect storm for paranormal activity. We felt it, and Hans and Sybil felt it. Tonight, we'll conduct a full-scale investigation. There's something dark here in the Barnstable house. They call it Seth's house. This is Ed's house. Get out. We need to figure out what it is. We really have to ask, what's causing this insane amount of paranormal activity centered around just one house? Why here? You guys ready? Ready. Yeah. Let's do this. felt something extremely dark and aggressive. What I'd like to do is start with the folder count. This is a different variation on a spirit box. It's going to have a variable speed setting so we can actually sweep the entire FM spectrum backwards and forwards. On this, we can actually mute while we ask our question and release for the response. So hopefully we can get a cleaner, more effective EVP. Are you here with us? Yes. Come on. 
Cindy. Can you just hear that? Yeah. Yes, Cindy is here with us. Is there a message you have? Yes. Yes. Grace. Grace. I see perfect human shadow. Couldn't even believe it I was looking at it. Are you trying to warn Grace? What was... Did you guys see a... Wait, is something you're suggesting is a light? Did anybody else see that? No. What? What did you see? I just saw a light, like, flat. That was really crazy. I, I... You guys didn't see that? No. It was a flicker of light. I feel that the mother of the daughter that drowned in the well is here. And, and I keep seeing Grace wandering into the basement. Has she gone down there yet? I'm not sure. Tell her not to go into the basement ever. I keep seeing Grace wandering into the basement. Has she gone down there yet? I'm not sure. Tell her not to go into the basement ever. Maybe this is a good time for us to break out and see if we can cover more of the house. I want to go back up to the second floor. I need to communicate with Lucy's mom. All right. I'll head to the attic. I'll take the gyroscope. This is almost like a, an electronic Ouija board. Maybe I can get some kind of interaction with the ghost of Lucy up in the attic. Shane, why don't we start you off in the basement. How do I even get down there? That's where Lucy died. That's where she drowned. Take the night vision headset with you. See if you can communicate with her spirit or whatever this dark presence is that's in this house. Vision and it's recording at the same time. Something touches him on them steps. Lucy, are you here? That. Are you down here in the basement? are bombarding you right now. This is a gyroscope. If you come up to this side, you can tell me yes or no, and it'll light up on this board. If you want to stop and touch on this, you'll be able to use letters and spell out words. For years, people have called you Lucy. Is that really your name? It's okay, you don't have to be afraid. Do you want to come over here and touch my hand? I'm starting to feel really uncomfortable. Okay, even here is better. Is there someone up here that would like to talk with me? It's so 
this one thing I know is fine. Okay, this is interesting. Holy. I am feeling like somebody is grabbing my hand. Feels like my hand is being squeezed. Who is grabbing my hand? I'm really uncomfortable. It does not feel good down here at all. There's this other presence in the house that's causing a lot of problems that's really, really dark. What tattoos on her leg? He's the one that I saw the first night. Somebody was hanged here. Well, you know. He's pissed. Because he doesn't feel like he should have paid the price. Talking to Sylvana. A man. No, I'm trying to hear what she's saying. That tattoos like on her leg? I don't know. Well, I'm going to get up and start walking like Tina. Are you here with me? Can you make yourself known to me? Can you show yourself now? Edmund? Somebody was running around the corner down there. Now I gotta get down there to get the damn report. I'm gonna try to come back out here. Sam? This is one of the most confusing investigations for me as a medium because I'm feeling so many things all at the same time. Man, I don't want to come back down here. I keep being shown her wet hair, her hair floating, her hair being on the floor. It's, it's so sad. Somebody was with her and pushed her into the well. kick out of this? You like scaring people? I really don't like it down here. For years, secrets have plagued this house and all the people that have lived here. There's been so much tragedy. Why do you stay in a place that's filled with so much misery? What was that? I saw a shadow come around that corner, right there. Are you hiding around over there? You don't have to hide. Jane? Sorry, dude. You all right? Oh. 
<laughs> Thank God. I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. I want to get. I want to get out of here. Right, come on out there. Let's call it a night. Some investigations are a mission to find spirits that don't want to be found. Last night, Barnstable House was the complete opposite. It feels like they want us to know their story. I just hope our equipment captured enough to help them tell it. This first piece of evidence was when I was in the basement. I felt a strong presence there. I felt like I was being watched all the time. I was hearing footsteps. I want you guys to check this out. Somebody is grabbing my hand. So, what I heard was Lucy is inside. And during this exact moment was when I felt like somebody was grabbing my hand. Somebody is grabbing my hand. Lucy is inside. That's insanely clear. Yeah. Wow. So this next one was when I was not in the basement at all. Okay. When I ran out of there. All right. My recorder was sitting on the step still, and we caught this EVP. I heard something right here, but I couldn't quite make out what it... We're going to focus right here. So what I'm hearing is, I hear, does no one hear me? Let me play it back again. Holy crap. Oh my God. I'm glad that I went back into the basement. Just the thought of somebody being down there and wanting to communicate and can't. I don't want to get all emotional like that. No, it's man, sad. You were there. You it's were sad. feeling that. It's sad. Whenever I was listening, <laughs> see, I don't want to do this. <clears throat> Shane, it's natural you're a dad and to think that there might be a child down there alone. Yeah. Whenever I was listening to it, um, it broke my heart. It did. All right. What else do we have, Shane? So this last EVP that we captured was upstairs in the attic. The attic is where Sybil picked up on a dark presence. You picked up on a darker, malevolent presence up there. Look what we captured on our static camera. Why do you stay in a place that's filled with so much misery? Holy. More than 50 years ago, Sybil Leaf was horrified by what she and Hans found at the Barnstable House. Now I know why. It's no wonder this negative presence has left a string of terrified owners in its wake. But our evidence goes beyond what Hans and Sybil found. It makes me think this haunting is personal. And Carrie Strumsky felt personally drawn to purchase this home. I can't help but think she plays a part of this, whether she knows it or not. When I walked in the door here, I was being bombarded by several different spirits. It was really, really overwhelming. It's like a hot spot for paranormal activity. Interesting. I'd like you to take a look at the evidence that we were able to collect during our investigation. Okay. Now, we've all heard the story of Lucy the little girl who reportedly drowned in the well in the basement. Shane had a very uncomfortable feeling when he was in the basement and ended up leaving. After he collected himself, he returned. And we got this EVP, electronic voice phenomenon. And it's a little hard to hear because of the water running, but there's a voice that appears right in this segment. I hear, so it sounds like something hear me. I'll play that one more time for you. The 
there's no one near me? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty clear. Right. So we're asking ourselves, what is this dark presence that Shane felt and Grace? She had an experience here that really unnerved her. Right. And we think we found out what it could be. Uh, at this point during the investigation, the two of us were up in the attic trying to communicate. The one cameraman's off back here, pointing at us. And here's our other cameraman. We're the only people on this floor. Why do you stay in a place that's filled with so much misery? Oh yeah, right there. What'd you see? The flash of light right there. At first, our cameraman even thought maybe it was him sweeping the room. Yeah. But when you go back and, no, and take a look... You can tell it's coming from inside. Hans Holzer and many other people that have been here have experienced this light. And usually proceeding or right after some type of paranormal activity. And in this case, we captured an EVP at the exact moment that light flashed. Why do you stay? in a place that's filled with so much misery. Let me just boost the volume a bit on that for you. Okay. Why do you stay in a place that's filled with so much misery? My home. What did you hear? My home. That's what we heard. You can hear his voice say, my home. There's no question about that. No question. I do want to remind you too, that the question that I asked is, you know, why with all of the things that have happened here in the past, why would you want to stay? This voice we think may be the voice of Edmund Hawes. Well, he mortgaged everything and basically became penniless overnight. And that's what led him, of course, to commit suicide on the tree in front. Um, I don't know that he's ever really left this place. But you've never had any negative experiences in this home, correct? I haven't, no. It's possible that because your ancestors actually built this home, the pain, maybe you're protected in some way. Maybe they're happy that you're here and you're not having these experiences. Edmund Hawes, this was his home, this was everything to him, but of course your bloodline precedes that considerably. I will tell you technically I, I am blood related to him as well. My genealogist wow. connected me to him as well. You're related to Edmund Hawes? Yes. Wow. That's, I mean, that's a remarkable connection. You were drawn here, and in you purchasing this house, You've essentially returned this home to Edmund Hawes in his bloodline. It's no coincidence that you're one of the few people who hasn't had a negative experience here. I don't, I don't think that's a coincidence. What do you make of all this, Carrie? Um, it doesn't surprise me that you have compelling evidence. The reason legends live on for 300 years, I think there's a reason for that. I think stories that aren't true fade quickly. When Hans Holzer first opened the case file on the Barnstable house, he and Sybil found a vengeful presence that rattled them both. And there's no doubt it's still there today. Did you hear it? That was my name. I'm going to play the whole thing again for you. Pay particular attention to the end. No. But the missing piece wasn't there for Hans to find 50 years ago. A bloodline descendant of Edmund Hawes. We're not telling you this to scare you. We're not telling you to avoid this house. You just have to know that the spirits here are aware of your presence. And to be careful. 
and this may not be the last time that you have an encounter with the spirits in this house. I don't doubt it. Who knows what role we play in the mysterious world of the unseen? That what? That? I just hope that when Carrie passes the keys want. on to the next owner, they know the centuries-old vendetta that comes along with the Barnstable House. Yet. Huh? Yet. They stopped moving. For most of us, fear is real. And the experience is intense. But for America's first ghost hunter, Hans Holzer, Jim Obama among the living. Fear was his life's work. Over his 60 year career, he investigated thousands of hauntings. We've had the privilege of opening new investigations into these yeah. terrifyingly true hauntings using out. Holzer's huh? unsealed case files. Yeah, I'll get one of those. Somebody just spoke over here. I'm paranormal investigator Dave Schrader. I, along with psychic medium Cindy Kaza. There's something going on in there, and we need to figure out what it is. And equipment expert Shane Pittman. I'm feeling unlike I've ever felt before. Now, we take a look at some of the scariest, <laughs> most insane, oh my God, I'm so tight. and shocking moments we've ever encountered on the Holzer Files so far. This place is evil. You've told us that these investigations have had an impact on you, too. So, Cindy, Shane, and I will answer some of your questions that you've sent on Twitter about these supernatural encounters. What was the most overwhelming location for you, psychic? We'll offer up new insights Shane, obviously, this really shook you. I think it's going to stick with me forever. And reveal never-before-seen moments that made these investigations all the more terrifying. It's coming right through the fire. This is bombshell. And this one where that ghost got at us after his knees. Yeah. Knock him right down. Our first question comes to us from Heather in Oceanside, California. So oh, when you sorry, got pushed bombshell. at the Whaley House, what did it feel like physically and potentially emotionally? Was there any physical or emotional feeling to it? Thanks. Love the show. Went outside. Yeah, that uh, that was the biggest holy minute for me in 14 years of investigating. I've never had anything happen like it since or before. Kermit, you're blocking the camera. You to the Whaley House bomb because Hans Holzer had Let's visited 60 years ago. Do you live in this house? Did it. What are you doing here? Oh, yeah. Look at Glossy. Yeah. I put him like right where Bombshell is and look at right. that. Hey. In his investigation, oh, found that it was what he believed to be the most haunted place in America. So we knew as a team this was a location we had to investigate. Let's take a look at that clip. Long oh, Park Info, is this you? Are you responsible for the death of Violet Whaley? laughing. Karma, get out of the camera. You little smutty pig. Alright, that sounds oh, like a God. The poor little bombshell at you. Look at him. Something just shoved me. Holy mm -hmm. When that happened, it was so fast and furious, oh, I, I couldn't even wrap my head around what just occurred. I was so go. able to pick up on, mm -hmm. on any kind of energy house, swell or anything prior to that moment. I had no idea this was coming. Yep, me too. Thought the same thing. You know, this left us all with a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was so important for us to take a deeper look when we did the evidence review. Let's take a look at that. All right, so this is our final piece of evidence, and this is also a moment I don't know how prepared I am to see. That happened so fast. I gotta see that again. I'm gonna take it frame by frame. You can see I'm being lifted off the ground by whatever's hitting me from the side. Your hip. Your hip is going up. Started again because the photos can only record an hour and twenty-five. 
getting terrified. So we were having these experiences at the exact same time. The cameraman Rob and I were, were, you know, engaged in our own experiment as we were all doing isolation moments. And it was funny because I was communicating with something that was affecting the temperature. Our temperature gauge was going crazy. And and I'm hearing from upstairs, Dave, and then downstairs, Dave, 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 Dave. Everybody calling for me at the same time. And, you know, I'm like, God, I have something interacting with me right now, right here. So it was, it was exciting, exhilarating, and agitating all at once because there was so much activity taking place. I felt like we almost couldn't cover it all. All right, so whatever I heard get out in my earpiece, it was clear as day. I got the hell out of there. I didn't know what else to do. It was so scary at that moment. It one of the most terrifying experiences of my career, for sure. This was another moment from the Morris Jubel Mansion, and Shane and I were investigating one of the most active rooms using the SLS camera. What we captured was really bizarre. Let's take a look at that video right now. Something's standing right there. Were you brought in in place of Stephen Jamel? What the f is it doing? No, look at that. Dude, I, it, it shouldn't be doing that. I don't think this thing is human. No, that's not human. Investigating the Morris Jumel Mansion, Shane and I had just entered the Aaron Burr room, hoping to make communications with someone or something. And this is what we caught. Something standing right there. Were you brought in in place you see the chair going back? of Stephen Jumel? No, 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 no. Not tonight, no. No. It, it shouldn't be doing no, you're not. I don't think this well, is human. Well, then have fun speaking to me. Oh, that's not human. I am speaking to you, so it doesn't matter. Well, well, just shut down the entire... Well, Cindy, are you regardless of being in your own phone, I don't want to cut you back my TV. We have another well, comment from Twitter. Sleepy on. Hollow Addict says, no way. Says he's going to turn off the camera, and that's it goes why off. You can't go back so and sleep in your room with me. Because I can't sleep without a TV. Yes, you can. No, I can't. Whatever was there. No, I can't. Yes. Well, what are you doing in the bathroom then? Yeah, because I, because there's a fan in there. <laughs> Don't tell you anything. Something's standing right there. Then right well, that after is why. he does these weird Spider-Man crawling moves all over, we yeah. just lose power. Well, that I mean, for that's bedroom. definitely a sign it was exerting how powerful it really was. I put the fan. I know you needed to take a deeper in dive into this. Let's take you know, a look like now at our evidence. Yeah, one night when Pat was back there to lay down with you, Pat, to be back. She was staring at the outside of the door. Yeah, that's what you get. That's what my room had an echo. I think it's moving around. No, that's what my room had a TV. That's Eliza. That's got to be Eliza. Your room Eliza. had an echo. It's here. I think you got an echo in your frickin' brain. Eliza. Man. It's her. <laughs> You know an echo in your brain? Yeah, that showed how much energy you was being exerted in that place. All of our camera equipment going off. You can off. actually see the TV what here and there. What I could see was yeah, the communication that I was happy. having with right these entities saying, we're in charge here. Yeah, we're keeping these other spirits trapped here. We're the ones running the show. And they said, you never know when to stop. You know, all this is really freaking me out. Like, this isn't a lie that I'm talking to. This is somebody else. What we uncovered about the real nature of the haunting was really surprising to me. This you seemed to be kind of uh, spirits and, and energies like from a religious sect that, that lived right in that area. Like what? Like the things that like screw up your brain? Yeah. Like we're locked in place. Our next tweet question heart. comes in yeah. from Colonel Forbin, who asks Cindy, "What was the most overwhelming bit, location you for you?" That would have to be like, the first location in the Devlin, Texas episode, like this. for sure. 
We had visited Tyler, Texas, following up on a case that really haunted in Hans Holzer. There was paranormal activity that was unprecedented, from poltergeist activity to abortations and possible demonic possession. That case took on a whole new feel for us once we had a chance to visit the original home. Let's take a look at the footage. Where's the way like warp? Let's kind of get things through it. So oh, I'm getting, I'm getting the chills. It's a weird way. Say? It goes like, it's kind of like get a sideways. This one does. Kind of like just up here. The rain makes it talk. Yeah. I want to get out of here. Yeah, I'm like doing this. All right. Yeah, sorry. Painless. Like, how do you get this far? It's rare that Cindy cuts her video short. Cindy, you were doing a form of psychometry in the house. Maybe you could help us understand a little bit better. What exactly were you feeling in that moment? So with psychometry, I touch an object, and then I see visions in my mind, and then I feel things very quickly. I'm getting pissed off just even being in the presence of this house. Just seeing the sheer terror that yeah, this boy was experiencing, and also the psychological damage he had gone through, and then seeing the blood and seeing suicide. Yeah, I mean, but it was one of the most overwhelming experiences. I had a medium, gunshot, 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 blood. You know, and one of the most overwhelming moments I had, Cindy, especially with the baseline, I don't see you walk out like that. This was something that was rare for you. Hans Holzer was unable to help this family in Tyler, Texas, and it ended in tragedy. But there was a case that was going on in Colton, Missouri, that was mirroring this in a very eerie way. This house has been a scene of some poltergeist activities that could have been explained by the public for the most ways. When they do that, we decided we needed no, to step up and help this family, so we made the trek from Texas to Missouri. In our visit, we did capture hand. something quite disturbing. This is a piece of an electronic voice phenomenon. Where's and pull? I'm trying, and I just feel like I'm being pulled back. Like, I'm trying to get out of here. 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 Yeah, this is the last one. coat pocket, and there's the car. That guy's in on it. I want you to hold back right here. And this brings us to our last piece of evidence. It's video. The millimeter in front of you is going crazy. When our surveillance camera does this, this is the exact same moment from a different camera perspective. We have seven cameras rolling throughout your entire home. And the two that were focused on this experiment are the only ones that glitched. We were dealing with a woman who was truly frightened for her life and the life of her children. And we had to be very sensitive. But we noticed that this growl and the electronic disturbances were during the moment of the experiment. We were trying to focus and have her purge this internal angst that she had. I want you out of my life. Oh, that's this. This is my house. Whose house is this? My house. And that's when all hell broke loose. Electronics were going off. We captured this roaring noise. Our cameras started glitching. To me, this is a classic case of poltergeist activity. Because Lydia was going through a lot of trauma. There's a lot of fear. And I believe she was manifesting this energy inside her that was presenting itself externally. It was not the moment. That. Our next question comes from David all the way in Essex, England. Mm -hmm. He asks, you've been bitten and that. brought not down to the ground quite violently into shame. Pause it quick. Um, in, in the show, no, in the picture, Hold would on, you man. change anything differently? Or your attitude and your stance is in what you calling want? out for the paranormal investigation. I just covered up what the David TV. What David is referring to is our investigation. I covered it up from the camera. Now the camera can't see I the TV. I the main deck, and we were following around something that was small in stature, a shadow figure, and we were making communication when suddenly above me, I could hear footsteps. Something was walking around. I called for Cindy, and this happens. 